and I am so excited that we get to do yoga together today. Now before we begin, I just wanted to remind you that yoga is supposed to be so much fun. We don't ever want it to hurt anywhere in our bodies. So if anything feels just not quite right, go ahead and take a break. You can sit or lie down, and then whenever you're ready and feel better again, jump right back into whatever we're doing. Also, I want to remind you that everybody's body is different. We all have a different shape. We all have different ways our bodies move. So if you see me doing a pose and you cannot get your body to do that or it just doesn't feel right, do whatever feels good for you. It doesn't have to look the same. We just want to make sure that it feels good when you're doing it. And the last thing I wanted to say is that you can see that I have my mat set up here. You don't need anything fancy for yoga. You can have a mat if you have one and want to roll it out. That's great. But you can do it on a carpeted floor. You can do it on your bed. You can do it out on the lawn, wherever you feel most comfortable. We don't need anything fancy for yoga. I did want to say though, if you have a soft blanket, something like this or this that's extra cozy, go ahead and pause the video and go grab it because you might want it for the very end. We're gonna do a uh, relaxation and it would be extra cozy with a blanket. And if you don't have a blanket, no worries. We can imagine we have one. All right, so when we start with yoga, a lot of times we start by warming up our breath. And that's what we're gonna do today. I know a lot of us are starting school soon. Maybe you've already started or maybe school's coming up in a few weeks and a lot of times when I would start school when I was a kid, I know that I'd be nervous. There's something that I might not feel comfortable about. I didn't know my teacher or which friends I would have in my class. Uh, this year's a little different. We may also be doing things differently through a screen instead of going to school in person to start out the year. So I'd feel nervous and I'd also have trouble focusing. I'd be thinking about summer and that's what this class is mostly gonna be about. We're gonna um, relive all the fun that we had over the summer. But once you start in school, sometimes you can't sit still um, and you just can't focus on what the teacher's saying. And you can use some of these breathing techniques to help you be less nervous and to also help you calm down and focus. So the very first one, I'll scooch back so you can see me. The very first one is just a deep belly breath. So you can put one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. And we're just going to breathe in and breathe out. Good work. And you'll see that you can feel... If you're breathing all the way down to your belly, you'll feel this hand move out and then back in when you exhale. So let's do that one more time. Breathe in and breathe out. Wonderful. And that's a really simple breath you can take. And you don't even have to have your hands here. You can just take a deep breath in and out. And sometimes it just makes us feel better, feel ready to work, feel ready to not be as nervous and be a little more calm. I'm also going to show you a breath that you can do that helps get rid of some of um, the tension, or if you feel a little hurty up here, especially if you've been staring at a screen a lot, you can breathe in and bring your shoulders up, and then breathe out and go, <sighs> just let it out on a sigh. Let's try that a couple more times. Breathe in, shoulders up to your ears, and out. <sighs> okay, one more time. Breathe in, and out. <sighs> that is a really great breath to do, to just let out any frustration or any nervousness or anything you might have. And the last one I'm going to show you is more of a summer one. And it's going to start to warm up our bodies a little too. Um, I'll scoot back a little. So this one's called a flower breath. And you can do it with your feet planted on the ground. Or you can lift them up and then you'll feel the muscles of your tummy or your core working a little harder. Whichever one you want to do and is most comfortable, that's the one you should do today. And then we're going to take our arms and we loop them under our legs, and when we lift up, we pretend that we're the petals of a flower. So we'll breathe in, and then when you exhale, close the bloom back up. Great work. Let's try that two more times. Breathe in and let your flower bloom, and exhale. Good work. Once more. Breathe in, and exhale. Great job, everyone. Okay, so now we have our breath warmed up. And that's really important in yoga, and it's really important in general. Um, it can make everything a lot easier. So once we have our breath warmed up, I thought we might warm up our bodies a little more with a good morning song. So we'll sing it two times through, and if you know it, 
you can start following along right away. Otherwise, go ahead and jump in when you're ready. This one's called Gilly Gilly Good Morning. Gilly 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 Good Morning, Good Morning, Good Morning. Gilly 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 Good Morning, Good Morning to you. Gilly 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 Good Morning, Good Morning, Good Morning. Gilly 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 Good Morning, Good Morning to you. Wonderful job. So now we warmed up our bodies a little, we warmed up our breath. Let's go have a fun day of summer adventure. So I was thinking we could remember some of the fun things we've done over the summer. So when we first wake up, a great thing to do is greet the sun. So stretch those arms up over your head. And then something that I know my kids love doing is maybe we've gone to a playground and we see the biggest, coolest slide. Now if you're a little nervous, you can take one of those breaths. Good job, climb up the ladder, climb up the ladder, and then we go down the slide, fold all the way over. Great job, roll up. And then, maybe we went for a walk. We are walking, and do you know what we often see on walks? We often see dogs, don't we? We have a dog at our house, and we love to play with her. So if I see a dog, I can go into down dog pose to pretend I'm like that dog. So come down, look like a down dog, and then we're gonna try something a little tricky. We're gonna wave hello at that dog. So if you're ready, wave with one arm, wave with the other arm, and then crawl your hands back towards your feet and roll up again. Great job. Now on our walk, maybe we see a really awesome climbing tree. So why don't we do tree pose? When we do tree pose, you can keep your foot right on the ground to keep your balance. You can put it on the lower part of your leg or the upper part of your leg. You just don't want to put it on your knee because you might fall over and get hurt. So put that there. You can bring your hands to your heart or you can make really cool branches going in the wind. And if you feel like you're going to tip and fall, that's okay, the ground is there to catch you, don't worry. Good work. And to be fair, we should do it on the other side. Maybe we found a second really cool climbing tree. So bring your leg up, get your balance. Maybe you have low branches that are perfect for climbing. Maybe you have high branches, maybe the breeze stopped and you're a really still, strong tree. Good work. And then we'll go back on our walk. We're walking and guess what we see? we see a pool. Pools can be so much fun. What's the first thing you usually want to do when you see a pool? You probably want to dive in. So let's bring our hands over our head, clap them together like we're going to dive, and dive into that pool, make a big splash. And then as we come up, we found a beach ball. So I want you to spread your hands wide like you're holding that beach ball. Bring it up over your head, stretch to one side, stretch to the other side, pull the beach ball back just a little bit, and toss it. Great work. And then we end in mountain pose. We've ended our fun summer day. But before it comes all the way to the end, I know that something I like to do with my family on the end of a summer day is to make ice cream and then make ice cream sundaes later and enjoy them together. So that's a really fun tradition that we have in our house. And I thought that we could maybe make some ice cream together. So I'll scooch so you can see me. We're going to take the soles of our feet and put them together and have kind of our butterfly wing position. And we're going to pretend we have a bowl here. Now, I don't know if you've ever made ice cream before, but if you have, we have to, you know, we have to add the ingredients and then we have to churn and churn and churn it. So we're going to start with that. So we put in some cream, we put in some sugar, we think, hmm, what flavors do we want? What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? I really like chocolate. I really like strawberry and raspberry. Maybe you want to blend some things together. So I think I'm going to put in some chocolate and some raspberries to get some really good flavor. Pick whatever is your favorite. And then we're going to take our hands here and we're going to turn and turn and turn the ice cream. Great work. And then we're going to turn the other direction. 
turn and turn. And we're stirring and stirring and stirring. And guess what? It is ready. So we are going to take it and we're going to sit crisscross applesauce and we're going to make some sundaes together. So we're going to put a bowl over here. We're going to put a bowl over here. We're making one for me and one for you. And we are going to take our ice cream and we're going to start by scooping it. So we're going to reach and do a scoop, reach over and put it in that bowl. Great job. Then we're going to reach here, take a scoop and put it in that bowl. Good work. So now we have one scoop for each bowl. That sounds tasty, but maybe not as special as we want to make it. So maybe we should do a couple more scoops. Do another scoop, put it in that bowl. And then over here, scoop, put it in that bowl. Now we have two scoops, two scoops in each bowl. Should we do one more, make it extra special, delicious Sunday? Okay, let's do a third scoop. Reach here, scoop, and over. Good work. Reach here, scoop, and over. Oh, good job. Now we have three scoops in each bowl. And it really wouldn't be a Sunday if we didn't add some toppings, would it? So we'll move our bowls here. And we will take whatever topping we like, maybe like caramel or hot fudge, pick it up, and squirt it on that Sunday. Great work. And do the same for the other one. Pick it up. Squirt it on that Sunday. Okay, that looks good. Now what else can we put? You know what? We could put sprinkles or toffee or something that we might shake on the top. So pick up whatever you want to shake on the top and shake, 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 shake. Do the same on the other side. Scoop it up and shake, 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 shake. Now those Sundays look awesome. Okay, are you ready to share them with me? Let's pick up one in each hand. We raise them up and we reach them out. Leave one for you and then I'll scoop this one back for me. And let's bring it up to our nose and smell all those awesome flavors. Ah, it smells delicious. All right, let's dig in. Yum. Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much for making Sundays with me. Now, when I get to do this with my family, I always feel really grateful. And I don't know if you know what the word grateful means, but it's basically like being thankful for something that's happened and being happy about it. It makes you feel happy inside. So we're going to sing a gratitude or a gratefulness song that helps us remember all the different things we can be grateful for. All right. And this will incorporate some of the different poses we've already done. We'll put our legs back in butterfly legs. So soles of the feet together. And it goes like this. I am grateful for the trees, for the flowers and the bees. I am grateful for every day that I get to laugh and play. Good job. Should we try that once more? I am grateful for the trees, for the flowers and the bees. I am grateful for every day that I get to laugh and play. Good job, everyone. Now, if you can, try to think of something today that you're grateful for. Maybe you can do it every day. It can be small, like you're grateful that you had a really delicious dinner, or you had a fun treat, or you got time to play outside. Or it can be grateful for a person, like you're grateful for your mom, or your brother, or your dad, or your sister. Whatever it is, just give a moment and think about that, and I guarantee it'll help you feel a little happier inside. All right, so another way that we can feel peaceful and calm, especially sometimes if there's a lot going on in our lives or at home, we can go outside. And going out in nature is a great way to find some calm, a great way to relax. And I thought that we would imagine that we've done a camping trip because a camping trip is a great way to end summer. It's a great way to do it any time, but it's a great way to think of the fun of summer that you've had. So something that we do when we go camping is we would go kayaking or canoeing. And I'll show you how that would look. So in yoga, we have what's called boat pose. And this one uses those uh, tummy or ab muscles again. 
So the easiest way to do both is you could do it, you could even do it sitting in a chair if you wanted, but you can do it sitting on the ground and just leave your feet on the floor and that'll keep you balanced and then sit up nice and tall. Now if you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can lean back and keep your back straight and then pull your legs up so they kind of match with the ceiling, they're parallel to the ceiling. And then we're going to do the little bit trickier part, we're going to do the kayaking or the canoeing. You can even sing row, row your boat if you want. You could do row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. So if we're kayaking, we go like this and you twist your body and you go back and forth. If you're canoeing, you grab your paddle on one arm and you row on one side. And then you paddle on the other. Paddle on that side and paddle on the other. And if you ever need a break, you can always put those legs back down and just do it with your feet on the ground. Still gives you a really great practice of boat pose. Good work. All right. So the next thing that I thought we would do is we would make s'mores. S'mores is something that is just so much fun to do around the fire. A lot of times around the fire you might sing or tell stories or make treats, right? So let's pretend we've already had dinner. I actually have my little fire. We can put it right here and what we're going to do is we're going to make our s'mores and this is called the s'more game. So we're going to put our legs out in front of us and we're going to pretend that we have um, a marshmallow on the end of our stick. So maybe we should put a couple marshmallows on. We'll put one, two, great work. And we're going to reach it up. We're going to reach it as far as we can into the fire. You don't want anything to hurt, but fold as far as you feel comfortable. Maybe put it on this side of the fire, put it on that side. Uh-oh, maybe it got burning a little. Give a couple blows. Good job. Put it back in. Great work. Now it is just the perfect marshmallow for me. I like mine kind of black and a little charred on the outside from the fire. I know some people like them a little more brown um, and just toasty. So whatever is great for you, get it all set. And then we're going to put it on our s'more. So we're going to pretend our legs are the bottom graham cracker. So put that marshmallow on, kind of spread it on. Great work. And what else is in a s'more? Usually chocolate. So if you like chocolate, go ahead and take some chocolate, break it up. We're going to break, 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 and put that on. Break, 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 break. Put that on. Good work. Now, s'mores don't only have to be chocolate and marshmallow. And especially since this is an imaginary camping trip, we could really put whatever we want on. So why don't you think of what sweet treat is your favorite? Maybe you like Reese's Pieces or M&M's. So we're going to crumble, 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 and crawl those down your legs. Great work. Maybe you like raspberry jam. So you're going to squeeze some raspberry jam. Good job. And then we're going to rub the jam on, spread it on. Good work. Now, if there's anything else you can think of that you want, go ahead and put it on. Maybe we'll go shake, 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 like we do with our Sunday. Shake, 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 shake. Maybe we pat, 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 pat. All right. And then we'll smooth it on. Then we take our second graham cracker. And we put that on the top, fold it over and put it on, press it together. Now, if there was anything you didn't want in the s'more that we might have put on, we can take it off. And it's a really easy way. We go like this, we put our hands behind us, and we lean like this, and it just slides off. Look, we made a slide, 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 slide. Good job. And then we're going to try making a table that we can eat our s'more off of. Do you want to try? You can also just sit on the ground and eat it. But if you want to try, we go like this, reach up, and then we, lum, 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 lum. oh, that's delicious. Lum, 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 lum. Great work. And then brush off the crumbs, brush off the crumbs. Great job. And then we're sitting back in front of our fire. That was really great. I hope you enjoyed your s'more. Now, I was thinking, what else do we like to do when we go camping? I know my family, camping or not, in the summer, we like to catch lightning bugs, or at least go chase lightning bugs. We always let them go at the end of the night. But that's a really fun thing, and they're really beautiful in the sky, aren't they? So I thought we could sing a lightning bug song together. So let's take our feet. We're going to go back to butterfly wings, but they're going to be lightning bug or firefly wings today. Good job. 
and we're going to sing a song. We're going to do it two times through again. Twinkle, twinkle, firefly, shimmering in the sky. Blinking, blinking, firefly, flying up so high. Good job. Let's do that one more time. Twinkle, twinkle, firefly, shimmering in the sky. Blinking, blinking, firefly, flying up so high. Good job, my friends. So that has been a really fun camping trip. And now we're going to do a little bit of a relaxation to end our class. So what I'd like you to do is if you did grab a blanket, go ahead and pull it up on you. And we're going to lay down. I'm going to show you what to do. But if you end up peeking at the video, you might see me sitting up. And that's only so that you can hear me um, while I'm talking. But you stay laying down and I'll tell you when to get back up. So take your blanket, snuggle yourself in. You can pull it all the way up. Maybe pull it up to your chest or keep it lowered. And what we're going to do is we are going to think about our day. So we had this wonderful camping day. What did we do today? We went kayaking and canoeing. We probably went on a hike. Maybe we got to play with friends in a field. We played tag. Maybe we went tree climbing again. And then we had the awesome fire where we got to catch fireflies and make tasty s'mores and sit around and tell stories and sing songs. And now it's time for us to rest. So while you're lying down, what I want you to do is we're going to start thinking about doing nothing. And that seems really easy, but it's actually really hard. Even for me as an adult, it's really hard. You might be laying down and you have the wiggles and you can't quite get all your wiggles out. So just do your best to lay flat on your back. We'll put one hand on our belly and one hand on our chest. And we'll take a few deep belly breaths. So just breathe in and out. And in and out. And once more, in and out. Good work. Now while you're laying there, to get even more relaxed, let's scrunch the muscles of our face, scrunch your eyes and your mouth when you breathe in and then when you breathe out, relax all of those muscles. Good job. Let's do that one more time, but with our whole bodies. So when we breathe in, we're going to scrunch our face. We're going to scrunch our hands into fists. You can scrunch your toes up. And then when you breathe out, just melt into the ground. Good work. Now you can close your eyes if you feel comfortable, or you can just kind of soften your gaze and sort of look up at the ceiling. And what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you are swinging maybe in a camping hammock between two trees on a gentle breeze. Maybe you're all snug in your sleeping bag in your tent. Maybe you're snuggled up outside by the fire just looking up at the stars. And I want you to think of all the sounds that you're hearing right now. Maybe you're hearing a squirrel and he is getting ready for bed just like you are. Maybe you hear the little chitter of a raccoon and he's just waking up. Maybe you hear an owl hooting off in the distance. You might hear water lapping on the side of the shore from the lake we were paddling in earlier. And you may also hear the crickets. The crickets are such a calming, wonderful sound right now. So as you're hearing those sounds, I want you to think, about just doing nothing. And like we said, that can be a little tricky, but thoughts are always going to come into your head. Just treat them sort of like clouds, and if a thought comes drifting away, just give it a gentle nudge or a gentle and blow the thought cloud away, and just focus on being relaxed and calm. to feel like we're almost ready to drift off to sleep so you can be there a few more seconds resting and relaxing and then when you're ready you can do that same scrunching exercise we did to relax just bring a little bit of movement to your fingers and your toes you could scrunch them up or just wiggle them and then I want you to roll over to one side just like this 
and then gently push yourself up back to a crisscross applesauce position. Good job, everybody. I know even for me as a grown-up, it's really hard to slow down and relax. So I hope you had fun imagining you were kind of having a relaxing moment at the end of a big camping day. Now at the very end of our class, I like to sing a namaste song. So I'll sing it twice through again, and you can start to learn it with me. Okay, so we bring our hands to our heart and do it like you're giving yourself the biggest high five. Good job. And it goes like this. My inner light, it shines for you. Your inner light is shining too. The beauty in me sees the beauty in you. Namaste. My inner light, it shines for you. Your inner light is shining too. The beauty in me sees the beauty in you. Namaste. You are beautiful inside and out. Thank you so much for practicing with me.